It's fun to have all the ages up there. And even when you're in the pew, I know sometimes those children's messages say more than you think. Or at least more than I think. I don't know. They're, they can be intense. That's fun. <laughs> Text for today, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 18. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share. To be generous and ready to share. You may be seated. So Paul writes to Timothy and tells him to encourage people to be generous and ready to share. And as I think about that exhortation to be generous, I consider how hard it can be at times. Because our generation, like every generation before us, we face obstacles. We face uh, challenges. And they can appear so insurmountable that I've got a... uh, I've got to preserve. I've got to conserve my resources. It can feel like no one before us has gone, be- has gone through what we're going through and cultural issues like sex and gender issues that no one has had to deal with the threat of global thermonuclear war that we've had to go through. No one has had to go through the conflicts with multiple nations at the same time that we've had to go with. No one has had to deal with the threat of how drugs and overdosing is happening at record levels like we are. No one has had to deal with a drastic generation to generation decrease in participation in the church like we are. There are these never-before moments. And as I get to these never-before moments, I think about how the needs to care for our bodies, to care for our souls, it's huge. Cries for help are like in stereo, coming from so many different sides. It's not just stereo, it's like Dolby Dolby digital sound. Everywhere there's cries for help. We, We live in a world that has many needs. And with each passing hour, each passing day, it can feel more and more impossible that you, me, just this small little spot of the world that we are could ever make a difference. And as this sense of insurmountability grows, do we have enough time to deal with it? Do we have enough talents among us to meet these moments? Are our treasures enough to meet the challenge that is ahead? Or is it that we just have enough to get through the day, finish it exhausted and so worn down, that it's hard to imagine being generous to anybody else. Perhaps the challenges of this generation are unlike any other generation before. But the promises of God are certain and true in our generation as they have been in every generation before us. Perhaps the challenges of this generation are too much. And it can be hard to imagine our days as anything more than just survival. Perhaps that is the spot we are in. But as Christians, I believe in the hope and the confidence that we are not in a spot that's insurmountable. The time that we are in, while unique to this moment, still has the promise of God in it. And that the resources that we have are not just enough to survive, but are more than enough to survive, enough to be generous and ready to share. This sermon series, Faithful Participants in God's Mission, is looking in the confidence that we can be faithful with the confidence that we have been reconciled to God. We can be reconciled to one another. We can have hope in this world that these days are not all that there is because we know that God is not dead, our hope is not dead. And so three weeks ago, I emphasized this promise that we are reconciled to God through the mercies of Jesus Christ with the confidence that Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose again on the third day, lives with the confidence that God lives, we live with hope. We have a mission to join with God in sharing the mercy of reconciliation in this world. God is making his appeal through us. We are ambassadors for Christ. We have a mission to share this good news with others. In the second week, Pastor Woodfin talked about our roles in this mission. We are 
all called into this mission for different roles, different things that we can do with our gifts. He had that illustration of a job description. Even with the benefits that you might be hated in this world and persecuted for his namesake, but that the purpose for all of this means that it's possible to do it yet still. Because the purpose of being a part of God's mission is to share the love of Jesus Christ. The demands of our time may require us to discriminate between what is changeless, what can change, and, and what we may feel like is just always going to be. And as we are ambassadors for Christ, as we are called to these moments, there is this increasing frustration that I sense in this world that there are things we cannot change and we have to learn to just deal with it. But I'm not going to learn to just deal with hatred. I'm not going to just learn to deal with injustice or a lack of compassion. I'm going to earnestly believe that God has called us to those moments to bring the transforming power of the gospel. That if the gospel can change your heart, that the Spirit can work upon your heart through the Word, you are confident not only is it going to change your life, but that it has the power to change the lives of others. The work that we do to share this reconciliation of God in this world, it's not a job from the past that becomes obsolete by progress. The progress of industry and science Do not change our trust that God has created the heavens and the earth and all that is in it and graciously and tenderly cares for us in this world. Progress of technology does not replace the promise that God desires us to have relationships with people. That these relationships are to be defined not just through transactions that are on Venmo or with fingerprints or with Face ID that are Our relationships are to be defined by grace and mercy. The progress of justice and the progress of change of how we see one another, it's never going to change how I see you. I'm going to see you as someone for whom God has loved and died for and risen again on the third day. Today, just the same as yesterday and as the same as tomorrow, we do more than just survive in the Christian church. We thrive with the promise that God's love is here to change us and to change the world around us. We share this love of Jesus Christ because I earnestly trust it changes us and it changes those around us. I want to share with you now a couple Bible passages that I think fits into this theme that I'm just fixed on. The idea that love does not sit still that love is at work and brings about change and transformation, that through the love of God we are strengthened and encouraged to be people of reconciliation in this world. First story I'm thinking of is in the book of Esther. Esther, a Jewish girl who becomes the queen of Persia, has this opportunity. There is a threat to the people, the God's covenant people to the Jews, and And Mordecai goes to Esther and says, you need to speak to the king. Esther is concerned that using her position of power to speak on behalf of others may put her own life at threat. And Mordecai says, who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Mordecai challenges Esther to be bold with mercy and justice in a time where it may cost her because for such a time as this, she has been blessed. And Esther then, as the queen, does speak up to the king and saves God's covenant people. For such a time as this, she was generous and ready to share, recognizing the cost could be great. But the benefit of speaking up for someone who cannot speak for themselves will always outweigh the cost. When you think for a moment about the gift you have been given by God to speak His grace into this world, the cost that that may do to your social credibility, the cost that that may do to those around you, and know that the risk is always worth it. It's always worth it to speak the name of Christ into this age, to give people a promise that as they may feel like they're just surviving, that they're just 
declining, that things are falling apart and there's nothing that they can do about it. And you can speak the name of Jesus into that moment. You can speak the words of promise into their life and let them know that there's an anchor that we can hold on to that will stop us from drifting away. Another one I was thinking of, so I spoke of Esther. How about this one? King David, 1 Chronicles chapter 29. King David, is, he's aging. He's starting to think about the next generation. His son Solomon. What kind of king is he going to be? And he knows that God is going to ask Solomon to build a temple. A temple for the name of the Lord, for where worship will happen. And David wants to equip the next generation to be able to find God's name in this age. And so King David says, I have provided for the house of my God so far as I was able. Gold for things of gold, silver for the things of silver, bronze for the things of bronze, and iron for the things... He goes on and describes all the kind of materials and how he's giving to support those materials. And then he finishes the section by a call to action. It says, Who then will offer willingly, consecrating himself today to the Lord? And from this call to action, from the top down to the bottom of society, everyone says, we will respond. The fathers of the houses made their free will offerings. The leaders of the tribes, the commanders of the thousands of hundreds, the officers of over the king's work. And it goes down in First Chronicles 29 how every generation, every leader of this generation is ready to lead the next generation into hope and confidence. To be generous and ready to share is to recognize the use of your gifts and the talents that God has given to you is not just for a here and now moment, but is to equip the next generation to also be a people of hope. All right, so another one for you. This is in Luke. Jesus is watching people as they're arriving to the temple to make their offerings. Jesus notices the rich and with their fancy clothings, making parades of themselves as they make their offerings. And then he notices a, a poor widow arriving and how she places two small mites, two small copper coins. And then he turns back to his disciples and he says, I tell you that this woman gave more to support the kingdom of God than all the rest. For such a time as this, you can be generous and ready to share with your good works you can be generous and ready to share with your time. You can be generous and ready to share with the treasures that you have. Because you know, with God's grace, your faithful giving, your support of God's mission, those two things, your faithful giving and God's mission, they become inseparable. God is going to use you in the support of His mission. As you give of yourself, as you give of your talents, as you give of the treasures and resources you have, it becomes inseparable with God's mission. The funding, the funding of the Great Commission. When Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that I have commanded you, and lo, I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. The funding of that mission... God has been reckless and crazy in this idea. He places the funding of the mission in you and me. What's crazy about that is doesn't he know how we're barely surviving? Doesn't he know how I'm, I'm just, every day is hard? And yet he says, through you, as you go, as you go about your days, you're going to be sharing the name of God. People are going to get baptized. People are going to be taught. You may think that in your little small corner of the world, nothing can change. Nothing can get better. But the promise of Jesus Christ changed you. And if you trust that the promise of Jesus Christ has changed you, then trust that as that promise is shared by you, it can change others as well. As we share the power of God through the works of Jesus Christ, our lives get changed and the lives of those around us get changed. Be a part of God's mission. Support it. Encourage it. Deliver it to others through your words, through your actions, through your lives. Because I trust that God's word has changed you. I trust that you can be a part 
of changing the lives of others. May this be the peace and the confidence that holds us in the cares of Jesus Christ for this day and for each of our days.